out in the West Texas town of El Paso. Within shooting distance of Mexico, there lives a legend secreted away behind high security measures. Secluded from the masses he serves, he surrounds himself with visions of exotic locales. Television, movies, magazines and books, they've all tried to capture his story. He has served the community of El Paso for over a decade as Chief Deputy Constable. When he comes home to his long-lasting marriage and much-loved animal companions, the softer side of the legend is revealed. It all started in the late 50s. He creates a private investigative agency, The Investigators. The 70s, Marlon Brando's son is kidnapped. The Investigators rescues him. To this day, he takes cases from around the world. He is J.J. Arms. My name is Jay Arms, and I'm a native from El Paso. At the age of 11, uh, I had a, a mishap. A friend of mine brought a uh, box of uh, torpedoes, which are uh, dynamite caps for, that they use on the railroad. And he asked me to open up the box, and I did. He was 18 years old, I was 11. When uh, I opened up the box, he says, take some of those uh, caps out and just rub them together. So I took some of those caps, two, ca two caps out, and I rubbed them together, and they blew up on my face. They called one of the best surgeons that they, they could find. Uh, the surgeon uh, stated that he, was, he had to uh, amputate my hands at the wrist. I woke up right next to, uh, to some bright lights on the, on the skylights, uh, and, uh, and I looked at my hands, and I asked the Lord, why, why me? Why did you take my hands, Lord? And then at the same time, I answered myself and I said, it wasn't the Lord that took my hands. Uh, it was the devil that took my hands because the Lord is our father and he wouldn't, he wouldn't uh, take your hands. Then the skylight got real bright and that's the way my life has been, real bright because uh, you are what you want to be. And uh, I've, I've always been told by my parents uh, to be the very best at whatever I chose to be. The reason that I've chose, chosen to, to stay in El Paso because I could live any place in the world that, that I would want to uh, live. Uh, El Paso is where I'm from. And uh, uh, like in, uh, in the Bible, it says, in Matthew 13, 57, it says, and a prophet not, will not be recognized in his own town. And that's what happened to the Lord. And I guess uh, I've been trying to prove a point that uh, uh, no matter where you came from, uh, the Lord was a, a carpenter's uh, son and I am the butcher's son. My father was a butcher, a meat cutter. And uh, I became an investigator, and so I, I, I say that uh, it's, it's a very interesting field, and uh, I, I did want to be a doctor because I was pretty good with my hands, but at the age of 11, that's when I had that mishap happen, and, uh, but it worked out. I guess the Lord uh, didn't want me to be a doctor at all. Uh, he wanted me to be uh, something different. Uh, he had something different in mind. What, what do you think uh, people want to say about you upon your demise? And uh, I want them to, to say that Jay Arms was a truthful person and he was, uh, uh, he was very, very tenacious. He would work on a case until he arrived at the truth. And I would like people to remember uh, that about uh, Jay Arms. <coughs> oh, shit. This is the Weird Shit Podcast.
<laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so today I was watching that show Dirty Money on Netflix, um, and I found out that there is basically organized crime based around, uh, like, the export of maple syrup in Quebec. I figured as much. <laughs> because for some reason in Quebec, there's, like, federal, like, some sort of big federal thing called the Federation. Big syrup. Yeah, it's big syrup. Yeah. And basically, you can only sell your syrup through them, yeah. but it's only in Quebec. The rest of Canada doesn't work Who like that. are you to think <laughs> that you could sell syrup in my town <laughs> without giving me a piece of the pie, eh? <laughs> you, the waffle man, come in here <laughs> and think that you can take all the syrup that you want. <laughs> my buddy, Mr. Pancake... <laughs> Things differently. Because you're my, you're my friend and I respect you. <laughs> but I'm going to need some of that money. It's not too much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> With all respect. Canadians are very polite. <laughs> if you, like, don't do what they say, they'll write you, like, a strongly worded letter. They'll, uh, they'll write a scathing Yelp review. Yeah. <laughs> of your, like, maple syrup farm. <laughs> they didn't follow the rules of the Federation uh, like that was mean they sold their syrup in the neutral zone <laughs> <laughs> fucking Romulans <laughs> buying up all the syrup <laughs> I knew it god damn it <laughs> so uh welcome to Weird Shit Podcast this is Mike this is Ryan this is Mike <laughs> you're not Mike I'm Mike <laughs> shit we've got two mics now <laughs> We this got, is getting out of hand. Now we, there are two of them. We might have three mics if you count the mic. That is true. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we're covering a person that I actually found out about from my recent trip to El Paso, who is the man, the myth, the legend, the Mr. J.J. Arms. Have okay. I, you ever heard of J.J. Arms? I have not. How many arms does Mr. Arms have? If you were to take a guess, how many would you think Less that Mr. Than Arms two. had? That's actually a really good <laughs> guess. <laughs> how many uh, How many arms do you think J.J. Arms has, Palmer? None. <laughs> <laughs> well. 38. <laughs> so, uh, J.J. Arms is a uh, private investigator uh, originating out of El Paso, Texas. In like the sixties and seventies, and this guy uh, that was like the golden age of being a PI, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like it was like dames and fast cars <laughs> and cocaine and et cetera, et cetera. And the dude was uh, pretty sure cocaine was until the eighties. You're not until the eighties. Well, so it wasn't until the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anything's cocaine if you try hard enough. It's true. You just gotta want it better. Water. Than... <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> ah, chlorine. Ah, oh, water in my nose. <laughs> so, uh, this guy, um, JJ Arms, was like a uh, private investigator back in like the 60s and 70s, and generally considered one of the best, uh, receiving awards and recognition as, quote, the man who made the greatest contribution to the investigative profession. So, they called him the greatest P.I. of all time, the greatest detective of all time. Yeah. They called him the Sherlock of El Paso. Yeah. <laughs> El Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Sherlock without the arms. Supposedly, he's never lost a case. But he did lose an arm. <laughs> but he has lost both of his hands. <laughs> he has lost both of his hands. The case he could uh, never crack. Yeah. <laughs> where his hands went. The, which is probably... The most ridiculous thing about this guy is he's done all of this without any hands. That is impressive. The dude has like uh has like two hook hands, which is like I just can't even imagine how you go to the bathroom with two hook hands. A lot of pain. <laughs> like just constant piercing <laughs> <laughs> would be like so painful. His dick's like Swiss cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's like <laughs> Oh, God, there has to be a private dick joke somewhere in there. <laughs> we'll come back to that. We'll get back to you on that one. We'll insert here. <laughs> His dick has multiple private eyes? I don't know. We'll get to it. So, uh, 
basically at like uh, the age of twelve, uh, JJ Arms like hanging out with his friend. His friend's like, "Hey man, you want to see something cool?" JJ Arms is like, "Gee, golly willikers, I don't know, but I guess I guess we'll go take a look." And Check like, out this knife. <laughs> uh, like, uh, so they go to the kid's house, and the kid pulls out these things that he found, which were railroad torpedoes. Wait, what? <laughs> what? what is that? Yeah. So, a railroad torpedo is used to, like, detonate rock and stuff to plant the track. Uh, like, when you're doing, uh, making railroads. And well, so... I was thinking it was some sort of torpedo that detonates and, like, lays down underwater I'm, railroad track. I'm, <laughs> I'm picturing a land torpedo yeah. that is on like a, a four-wheeled like a cart. Yeah, it's, like, on a four-wheeled <laughs> cart that just follows... The railroad until it hits the nearest train going full speed. <laughs> I think I remember an episode of Cowboys of Moo Mesa with a railroad torpedo. I think that was a thing. <coughs> Not familiar with that. It was a show. You remember in the early 90s when like all these networks and toy companies started making shows that ripped off Ninja Turtles mm. like Street Sharks and okay. Biker Mice from Mars. I remember Street Sharks vaguely. There would be, like, some sort of mutated animal, and there's four of them, and they're a team. And that was, like, the thing. In the early 90s, there was one show which was called Cowboys of Moo Mesa, and it was, like, anthropomorphic cow cowboys. That sounds incredible. With, like, all kinds of ridiculous, like, like sci-fi gadgets, and like, villains and stuff, too, that they had to fight because cowboys wasn't enough. They had to be space cowboys. <laughs> uh, and I think I remember them having railroad torpedoes. No, so I guess I see where the Moo Mesa comes from. That's even worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's even worse. <laughs> so, uh, JJ Arms, he's hanging out with his friend. His buddy's like, gee, golly willikers, JJ. Like, why don't you carry these two things and try rubbing them together? JJ Arms is like, I don't know. Sounds like a bad idea. He's like 12 years old, grizzled as fuck already. He's like, all right. And he like pulls off the like tops of them and like rubs two of them together and blasts his hands off. Like, like from rubbing these two uh, detonators together. So you got my bulletproof. Check this out. (laughs) Boom. Uh, And he ends up going to the hospital and his hands are just fucking mangled. And the doctor's like, yeah, we can't do anything for that. So. He's they, just, uh, like in the beginning of Tropic Thunder, when his hands are just like spaghetti. <laughs> and, uh, J.J. Arms said that while he was in the hospital, he started, like, cursing God. While he's, like, laying in bed, he's like, God, why did you take my hands? <laughs> like, I need those, basically. And I was using he's, those. Yeah, <laughs> dibs. <laughs> uh, like, uh, and he said that then he realized that it wasn't God who took his hands. It was the devil. Because God loves everyone and would never take someone's hands. It was the devil that took his hands. His hands were idle. And uh, Zane was like, yoink. <laughs> My playthings. <laughs> Let me get shorts on them hands. <laughs> so uh, he ends up like spinning his He's life. Just like, Damn it. Being, like, off his hands. And <laughs> gives it to him. Call shorts. <laughs> And uh, the doctors end up having to, like, take off his hands because they can't fix them. That's sad. Yeah, which is a bummer. But it also gave us uh, this guy who is completely ridiculous and amazing. So, uh... This was his tragic superhero origin story. Yeah, everyone needs a superhero of, origin story. Instead of losing his parents, he lost his hands. <laughs> this is his. <laughs> he is a, uh... He lives in El Paso. Uh, He gets paid millions of dollars per case. Uh, Millions of dollars per case. Millions of dollars per case. What kind of case is he cracking? Uh, So here's the thing. Space Uh, cases? He came to, like, at first he's just, you know, working like a regular private eye. He's, like, making, like, making it day-to-day, basically. Like, not doing that great. And then... Uh, He says, as I grew up, I had different jobs. I worked in movies as an extra since I was 17. 
I went to the Pasadena Playhouse, a theatrical school. I got disenchanted when I was working in pictures because I would see all those people go into my dressing room and they were smoking marijuana, and I knew that wasn't right. Wait, wait, wait. That's what made him? Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> he says, I always wanted to get ahead. I never really wanted to be an investigator. I got into this business by mistake. I started studying. <laughs> he slipped and fell into a private investigating I, career. I, I originally wanted to be a dark juggler. <laughs> <laughs> the dream was a dead. The, the dream became a, a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Soon after I touched that torpedo. <laughs> now there's only the phantom pain. <laughs> <laughs> and the hatred burning in my heart there's, for all torpedoes. No, it's just a constant phantom juggling. <laughs> just whenever he sees a torpedo, he like goes into a blind rage and it starts playing that song from Kill Bill and he like no, puts playing. on his <laughs> chainsaw hands. <laughs> or like, like just a little bit slower. So it's... <laughs> so uh, he says... Um, uh, I got into this business by mistake. I started studying criminology and I started studying law. I did research on all law enforcement agencies. I found out that the private eye had the worst reputation of all because of B-movies. They would show the ex-cop become a private eye and he was playing both ends against the middle. I said, the private eye has the worst reputation. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be the best one in the world. Uh, I've never heard of him. I got my license to be an investigator. I wanted to be different. I wanted to guarantee results. I wanted to be international and go all over the world. That's what I've been working towards all my life, to be better than everyone else. Cue uh, Rocky Train montage. <laughs> Except it's over the course of 30 years, <laughs> and he doesn't make any progress. <laughs> so, like, uh, so he started working as a private eye and stuff. <laughs> Your montage. And he just wakes up early in the morning, tries to like, you know, crack the eggs to make uh, to make the egg drink. Just drops them in the fucking front floor, trying to hold them with the hooks. He's like got one. It's it's like both of them, but they keep slipping. No, it's I like, got shit. it. Thirty years it's, later, he's just standing on a giant pile of like. No, it's, it's a 30 year montage of just him trying to learn how to crack eggs with his hook hands, and then he finally gets. He's like. Now we can begin. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like 80. <laughs> Shit. Like, damn it. Should, I should have just skipped that step. <laughs> then his cholesterol's too high and he can't have eggs anymore. <laughs> he's like, damn. Can't take the pills because it's just too close. <laughs> <laughs> can't pick up the damn pill. Chop proof. Uh, chop proof. Just, yeah. <coughs> yeah. In my mouth. I wonder if there's some weird hook bottle. <laughs> Ibuprofen for hook hands. So, uh. <laughs> you squeeze it with your nubs and they, they shoot up. So, in, uh. It's like a silly bean. <laughs> it's like little pods that you just fucking pinch till the, uh. The, the, the bean comes out, <laughs> except it's pills. <laughs> So this dude, uh, he's I working. To any people who are missing hands listening to this episode? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> it so, must suck. So uh, uh, he works as a private investigator for like years and years until uh, in March of 1972, um, like he suddenly gets a phone call uh, coming in from like Europe. Um, and it's nobody else but Marlon Brando uh, calling him, and Brando's like, uh, he's like, hey, uh, Jay, my boy has been kidnapped. He says, they just released one of my movies where I played Don Corleone, and I think this is the result from the mafia, and so I want to hire you to find him. The FBI, the police, nobody has done any good. Oh, sorry, it's the FBI, the police, nobody has done, nobody has done any good. <laughs> and uh what so can't hear you speak up Ar arms <laughs> says he managed to find Brando's son Christian in a fishing camp on Mexico's Baja Peninsula with the help from Mexican authorities 
Jay said he took the boy from what he described as a group of, quote, hippies. <laughs> so he wasn't kidnapped. He was just really high, like, hey, man, let's go fishing in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. So, uh, so he says, I'd I met... caught a taco. <laughs> <laughs> They're like fishing for tacos. <laughs> they're just like they behind have like a... fishing equipment, but they go up to a taco stand and they're just like they're like behind <laughs> Senor Frogs with like a string with a hook on it, like trying to like get shit off of people's plates. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like they just like see like one of those taco trucks and like they're just sitting there with fishing poles and the guy's just staring at him from behind the counter and he's just like slowly putting the fishing pole through the front of the truck just like lowering it down into the stand. Supposedly they were fishermen. I like thinking of them as being fishmen because that would explain why he has the two hook hands in the first place because who else would be better at dealing with fish people? This is like a shape of water situation. He's just like, he's just like fucking like Zatoichi cleaving through fish people with like his hook as like he makes his way through he's just doing that camp thing of, like hippies or like you put your finger in someone's mouth <laughs> <laughs> but to people that's how he deals with them it'd be fucking ridiculous <laughs> fish hook <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ass so uh he says I'd met Marlon Brando in my younger years when I was working in pictures we used to hang out together, and when I became a private investigator, I sent him a note and explained to him if he ever needed anything. Uh, and that's when, that's why he says he got the call from Brando. I believe uh, it. I wonder if, like, he ever makes coffee and, like, stirs it with his <laughs> hook hand, and then forgets that it was in the coffee, so his, his, like, hook hand's really hot now. And then it's like, hmm. And, like, he touches himself on the head to think, you know, and then it's like, ah! <laughs> Fuck, that, that was all the time. <laughs> it's like the worst problem when you have no hands. <laughs> That's the worst problem, yeah. <laughs> Burning yourself. He says, uh, he says, I flew a helicopter and I landed on a school ground. Wait, 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 wait. I hired, <laughs> I hired wait, wait, five wait, wait, federal wait, wait, wait. police to follow no, me in a jeep. No. <laughs> I don't How think so. does a guy with hook hands fly a helicopter? Very carefully. <laughs> Is what that he, why he landed on what a school? What he meant to say, <laughs> what he kids. meant to say, is he attached his helicopter attachment to his stump <laughs> and used that to like fly and landed that. He That's just has like a weird assortment of uh, God, what's it? the the gadget? Yeah, it's like uh, Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget. No, he, things for he, claws. He just, go, he, go, Abrams helicopter hands. He just takes off his uh, <laughs> takes off his claws and like attaches helicopter blades. And he's like everybody, stand back. Some folks are blown. And then he lands, and then they just turn into katanas. <laughs> he's, he's starts just murdering like, kids. He's just farting napalm. Dude, <laughs> I would love to see. He passes over the fish. I would people. love to see like a black dynamite style cartoon show about this guy, where he's like fighting ninjas, and like the ninjas bust through the windows around him, and he like transforms his hands into like katana hands <laughs> and starts like fighting them with those. You be- killed my master. <laughs> Pretty die. Fucking my incredible. Hands were removed once by katanas. <laughs> now they are katanas. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh. Joke's on you. He says, I flew a helicopter and I landed on a school ground. I hired five federal police to follow me in a jeep. I searched by air. I took off searching by a bunch of caves by the walls of the ocean. I searched for four days. Uh, the following day, the fifth day, I was searching close to the ocean and I saw the Volkswagen. Half of it was in the bushes. I landed nearby. I checked the license plate, and it was the one I was looking for. Where was the other half? <laughs> if half of it was in the bushes. Dead. Where's the other? Oh, okay. <laughs> there were a bunch of sleeping bags in the caves. Eight of them. I had scoped out everybody. I got my thirty caliber and went in there. I unzipped the sleeping bags and got them all lined up with their hands wait, on the wall. Wait, how, how was he using the gun? How did he unzip a sleeping bag? <laughs> That's my question. I feel like that's easier to do because I'm thinking he has those hook hands that like 
bench or whatever. <laughs> the benching ones? But, like, it still doesn't explain how he flies a helicopter or, like, uses a gun. Gun attachment. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I think Here's of. the thing. This guy literally has gun attachments. This guy literally made prosthetics for himself, like... That he can shoot a gun with by, like, twitching his bicep, and it'll, like, fire the gun. That's very dangerous. <laughs> it's incredibly dangerous. For you. <laughs> but don't worry, because he's highly trained. <laughs> don't worry, because he's highly trained, he is also a black belt in karate. Of course he is. <laughs> and therefore knows how to keep from accidentally flexing that bicep and uh-huh. shooting someone. Yep. He says, uh, I got my thirty cal and went in there. I unzipped the sleeping bags and got them all lined up with their hands on the wall. The last sleeping bag was Brando's son. I recovered Brando and flew him to Los Angeles and called his house. Marlon Brando answered and I said, I have Christian with me. I found him. Uh, yes. <laughs> this is Taco. <laughs> <laughs> you have done such a wonderful thing for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow, that means so much to me. (laughs) And then he passes out. Wait, I have a kid? (laughs) He was on a lot of drugs. (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna run to the store real quick and get some cigarettes. I'll be right back. (laughs) Just tell me the lines about your piece. I am the Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) Please leave a. You're not perhaps a thief. Are you an assassin? (laughs) (laughs) I have always been different. Puede sonar surrealista, pero el investigador privado J.J. Arms, cuyo nombre podría traducirse al español como JJ Brazos, vive buenos tiempos en una de las regiones fronterizas más afectadas por la guerra del narco. Toda una jauja, gracias a la violencia en Ciudad Juárez. Este tejano, que perdió los brazos a los 11 años de edad en un accidente con dinamita, Gusta de definirse a sí mismo como un James Bond fronterizo. Uno que en los 70s tuvo su propia figura de acción y que hoy opera y vive en El Paso a 5 minutos de México. Desde hace 50 años, Arms dirige una empresa conocida como Los Investigadores, que se jacta de haber resuelto casos como el secuestro del hijo de Marlon Brando en México, allá por 1972. Pero los tiempos cambian, y ahora se dedica a la lucrativa industria de protección de empresarios extranjeros que temen ser secuestrados en Ciudad Juárez. Who is J.J. Armas? J.J. Armas is uh, uh, the best investigator in the world one of the best investigators in the world i understand that your company also does uh, protection of uh, american businessmen in juarez in juarez and and all over all over mexico and since we're close to the we're five minutes from the border and uh, so we um, a lot of times they come from uh, companies from japan companies from uh, china companies from uh, the, uh, the u.s uh, they they come to see their uh, twin plants in Mexico, so they want uh, because of the situation now with Mexico, uh, everything so so serious down there. They want us to uh, to escort them and protect them, so we escort our clients into Mexico and uh, and bring them back. Is business good at this point? Uh, my business has been um, good all the time, but exceptionally in the past two two or three years. It's been an exception. We have more business than we can handle. Aunque dice que la protección no es su único perfil y resuelve secuestros, asegura cobrar entre 100 mil y un millón de dólares por caso. I've solved. Um, 70 kidnappings in Mexico. I have 
Mexican investigators that are working right now as, as we speak in Mexico. Have they ever fought off an attempt of kidnapping? Yes, they have. have there has been there has been no no gunplay, uh, though there has been any shootings. One of my investigators was shot, and uh, um, about uh, eight months ago. And I, I love animals so much that uh, I had them taxidermied and uh, brought them to my office because I love animals. And uh, like I said, uh, we had, uh, uh, I had black panthers, black panthers, and uh, uh, this one got in a fight uh, with one of the tigers because uh, he got into the tiger's cage. So uh, he was killed. Uh, cheetah, the cheetah used to run loose. And uh, also had uh, bull masters, uh, dogs. They ran around with them. Esta es su oficina, una reliquia que da la sensación de estar atrapada en una vieja serie de televisión. Para Arms, esto no es anacronismo, simplemente es estilo. Y este no es Muammar Gaddafi. Es su guardaespaldas y chofer de una limusina blindada repleta de armas. Es parte del panorama surrealista que se vive aquí en El Paso y en Ciudad Juárez debido al recrudecimiento de la violencia en la frontera. Y es que de este lado, en Estados Unidos, hay quienes han aprovechado la situación para hacer negocios, como la empresa JJ Arms, una empresa por decirlo menos exótica. Con imágenes de Vicente González, para Milenio Noticias desde El Paso, Texas, Víctor Hugo Michel. So, uh, he also, like, after this, he became, like, the go-to private eye for, like, Hollywood. Like, any of the Hollywood people who ever had a problem, they're like, you should talk to G.J. Arms. G.J. Arms will do it. Which is how... He's got no hands, but he's still really good. He's still really good. You... He Probably pretty much acts like he has no disability at all. <laughs> he can unzip things, fly helicopters. <laughs> well, here's the thing. One of uh, one of the people who tried to get like a TV show co-produced about him uh, with J.J. Arms, he said, uh, this could truly be a tentpole franchise with the right studio partner. He says, amazingly, Jay can now do more with the fantastic steel claws that have replaced his hands than people with their own hands can do. Mm. He can reach into fire, Doubt it. smash through doors, <clears throat> fire bullets with unerring accuracy, cut through metal. I can't type though. <laughs> fly utilizing a jetpack. He can, <laughs> he can scuba dive, pilot a jet, and he's a master of the deadliest karate chop. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you know, for, for combat and action situations, yeah, an advantage. Well, like, it's still a big disadvantage for your everyday just walking around the house. I'm pretty sure I can masturbate better than him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He might have one of those that's a flashlight. He's got a <laughs> fucking flashlight attachment. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I told you not to bother me while I'm doing a stakeout. Go, go, get your vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he comes, he's like, go, go, catch it, semen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. A new load. It's just a bunch of nanobots. <laughs> just sprays like spider robots everywhere. <laughs> just like, like the fucking gray goo from, uh, what was that Michael Crichton book? Is it prey that has like the nanobots that take over the yeah, world? Prey. Just like Grey Goo just, <laughs> just Go my minions. <laughs> Away <laughs> <laughs> So uh <laughs> he, uh yeah, apparently he's good at karate shopping. <laughs> the dude uh he is currently chief investigator for a group that he owns called The Investigators. <laughs> uh, 
an El Paso based detective agency and lives on a 14 acre estate in El Paso, Texas uh, with assorted tigers and cheetahs, a chimp, a wife, and a loving family. Okay. Why were they listed in that order? <laughs> Is that his, like, priority level? <laughs> the cheetah always comes first. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's also married to kids. <coughs> uh, check out all these animals. Check out these animals, though. He, uh, he's also, get this, been known to use a 750-pound tiger as a lie detector. Mm. This guy has cheetahs and tigers, jetpacks, can pilot a helicopter, has replaceable gun hands, so he can, like, put fucking, like, guns on his hands. I feel like they couldn't make a movie about this guy because it's just too awesome. It's not believable. Yeah, nobody would believe it. This guy's too ridiculous. He's like the six million dollar man combined with, like, uh, Chuck Norris. It's just too much. Right? Uh... He says, I never give up, is how he explains his success. Um, in his autobiography, uh, he's like, this is like a bit of like what his like day-to-day life as a detective is like. He's In his autobiography, Arms relates an experience he had with a client who'd hired him to get the goods on her husband. It turned out that the husband, a well-known actor, was having an affair with another man. <laughs> <laughs> Distraught, the client made a pass at arms, revealing her breasts and asking, Is there anything wrong with these? Arms allegedly replied, That's not what you hired me for. <laughs> <laughs> Slap my nipples with your hook hands. <laughs> just like, maybe she's just really into like bondage. It's like. Maybe she just, really like, likes Captain on. Hook. No, like he, Peter Pan as he, a kid. He just takes off the blades and puts on his uh, twister attachments. <laughs> <laughs> he has like giant drill dildo hands. I have for, many like... attachments. Another <laughs> 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 one, dicks. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Let me see. At the flex of a bicep, I can make you orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> you go from flaccid to erect at a moment's notice. <laughs> flaccid, erect, flaccid, erect, erect, flaccid. <laughs> <laughs> he also uh, drives around in a Rolls Royce. And uh, has built into his artificial right arm a revolver that fires a twenty-two magnum shell. Jeez, <laughs> this is awesome. built in under the hook. Or yeah, like... it's like in the arm. So, so um, like he can just kind of like and like flip the hook up and just. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm assuming. <laughs> this guy is like the most inspiring story I've ever read. I know he's incredible. He sounds like the kind of guy who went, "Damn, I lost my hands." Guess I'll become like. I guess I just better make these some <laughs> sick ass attachments. I guess I'll just become a millionaire action hero, <laughs> private investigator. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done with your life lately? <laughs> Nothing compared to this guy. Nothing compared to this Even guy. Even with my double hand advantage. Dude had no fucking hands. <laughs> I feel like now listening to the story, it's a double hand disadvantage. I think so. Think yeah. of how I think little, everybody should just go out and cut off their hands. Think of how little <laughs> meaning your life has, and then think about how much less it would have if you cut off both of your hands. <laughs> I feel <laughs> like I would gain and meaning. This guy, this guy is like made it a positive because he's ridiculous. Yeah, he is. So uh, he uh, maintains offices around the world, which employ twenty four hundred people. Uh, he has a list of clients that includes politicians, royalty, and show business executives such as Elizabeth Taylor, Elvis Presley, Marlon Brando, and Yoko Ono. What's a politician? Is that like a a, a food taster? They have good palates. <laughs> <Palatitions. Yes. laughs> they're the uh, they're the guys that make those pallets that they carry things on in like uh, mm. Sam's Club and yep. stuff. Okay, just going to politics for That's thirty years. <laughs> You're just very confused the whole time. <laughs> yeah, uh, when do we get the forklifts? <laughs> Mary, Mary, a pallet of cheesecake, <laughs> a hammock of cake. 
Where are you getting these measurements? Mary. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> he says, uh, as for his handicap, he says, I never think handicap? about it. Handicap? <laughs> he says, I never think about it. <laughs> Limits are only put on people by themselves. How does he not think about it? They're his hands. <laughs> uh, he doesn't think about it, but the phantom pain is always there. <laughs> That's what drives him. I try not to think about it. So I was able to search for like four straight days. <laughs> Brando's kid. <laughs> Literally, he like uh, he taught himself to write. <laughs> um, he uh, he said that although students and teachers went out of their way to help with pity in their eyes, Arms insisted on doing everything himself. At one point, he dripped a pool of blood on the floor while trying to write on the blackboard with his new arms. In high school, he competed in sports and won letters in track, football, and baseball. It's probably pretty easy to win track when you just hook all your opponents <laughs> while running past yeah. them. Just with like grappling hook <laughs> arms. <laughs> just like you go... Pff, right like at the beginning, the, guy in the gun goes off and you poke them in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Pow! Pff, what happened? <laughs> He's just like on the pitcher's mound. Uh, <laughs> leaning in for the sign. The catcher's... Flashes the hooks as arms <laughs> transform from the cannon. <laughs> Give him the hook ball. Yeah. Just like shoves the ball in his like cannon arm. Just shoots it and kills the batter. Yeah. He like, three strikes, <laughs> you're out. Creep <laughs> 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 so, like takes his fucking face off. <laughs> The catcher has to sit there with like a Kevlar catcher glove, and a ballistic shield. No ballistic shield. In addition, Good luck hitting this one. <laughs> In addition to uh, to successful recoveries of scores of kidnapped victims, by his accounting scores, uh, he says he and his son routinely repossess Harley motorcycles from outlaw motorcycle gangs. Was, was uh, his son born without hands? <laughs> yes. They, uh, they, or is it just like a new Jewish tradition where they cut off their hands? <laughs> he says that uh, that because he's worked against some pretty heavy hitters over the years, he's received many death threats. Yeah, I wonder who some of his villains are. And has narrowly escaped. It's a guy with no legs. <laughs> no, 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 it's a guy it's with like some, four hands. Yeah, I was going to say, it's the <laughs> guy General with... Grievous. It's General Grievous. <laughs> <so hard. laughs> it's some guy with like four arms. Like, you got a problem with hands, buddy? <laughs> I got four hands for you. He just like takes off his shirt and just has nipples for, <laughs> for hands, for nipples. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with these? <laughs> he tries to punch him. It's like, the the it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and then the other hand, like karate chops it, <laughs> and his like hook hand shatters. He's like, oh my god! What is, yeah, okay, I got no <laughs> idea. I got another idea for a villain. <laughs> It's a guy with peg legs. <laughs> regular, regular hands. But he has hook feet. It's the Blade Runner guy who shot his girlfriend while she was in the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, Posterius? Something like that. Pistorius? I think it's Pistorius. Yeah. He was like, uh, he was like, yeah, my girlfriend's in the bathroom. Let me shoot a gun randomly into it real quick. Oh, I oh, thought it that was an guy. intruder. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the Australian... Uh, South Olympian African or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is it America? Fuck it. <laughs> so, uh, it's somewhere <laughs> south of the equator. <laughs> somewhere in shit. some shithole country. Exactly. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so, uh... Let's see. What else was it here? Uh, when asked if there was ever a case he wasn't able to solve, he says, I have a contract that I negotiate with my clients. I tell them, you hire me, you hire my services, but you cannot get anybody else involved. There are cases that I've started, but then they start getting attorneys involved, and I withdraw. Mm -hmm. So, like, <laughs> he'll fucking pilot a jetpack and a helicopter and shit to find no a kid, lawyers. but you bring a lawyer in that room... He can't help Forget it. Forget about <laughs> it. He hires uh, Charlie's uncle. 
<laughs> the, the, the small hands. <laughs> Nobody look! Nobody look! <laughs> that was probably one of my favorite scenes in that show. Nobody look! Oh my god. Maybe Charlie's uncle would be one of his villains. <laughs> yeah. With like the giant prosthetic hands. <clears throat> <laughs> fighting like his hook hands yeah, and like he's the, like you have two perfectly good hands <laughs> no they're too small it's like the giant foam fingers <laughs> <laughs> we're lawyers <laughs> Mickey Mouse is one of his enemies <laughs> with those giant glove hands he uh he says that mostly uh the most common cases he gets hired for are missing persons cases uh wayward husbands and wayward wives he says, we do industrial investigations, industrial espionage, industrial sabotage, or attempted homicide. You can walk in with any type of case, and we can handle it. We work all over the world. What's... Does he not do non-industrial things? What, is, what does he mean by industrial... Investigations or industrial espionage? Yeah. What, what is that? I'm Why assuming not it's like companies trying to skirt around regulations or something. That's what I would think. I don't know why he doesn't do regular espionage. <laughs> it's like below his pay grade. <laughs> I'm surprised he can sabotage things and get away with it. Yeah, he's pretty recognizable. So, uh, <laughs> he's like, uh... There's only two hook prints on this weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, we just hired CC Legs. <laughs> Hello, CC Legs, how are you? I'm good. I'm definitely not J.J. Arms in a bad disguise. <laughs> uh, let's see. He says, uh, what's your favorite weapon? He says, my favorite weapon is the American 180. That's my signature weapon because the American 180 is a machine gun and you can put it on your arm and shoot it with one arm and put your aim on the target and it's that accurate. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good weapon. <laughs> he says, to carry would be my revolver. That's what I prefer. Uh, how many times have people tried to assassinate you? Well, let me tell you. There's been so many assassination attempts. When you take a case, 50% of the people love you. The other 50% hate you because you've helped incarcerate their brothers, sisters, cousins, and husbands. I guess that's all the henchmen that he <laughs> fucking, like... Incarcerates makes up like fifty percent of the world population. All the people he disemboweled with his hook hands. It's like it's like uh, the fucking hallway scene from uh, from the raid. Yeah. It's stabbed with hook hands. It's just like that's every investigation. He like goes on. stabs into a dude's thigh and like drags the hook through it. And like oh fuck no, JJ Arms stop. He's like I can't. I need justice. Dirty stinking hell all over town. <laughs> Just revolvering people in the face. Uh, he says, uh, they don't realize why. They hire you to conduct an investigation and you get the evidence and they get sent to prison. They feel that you're the one who sent them to prison. That's why they attempt to assassinate you. <laughs> to me, it's part of the work. <laughs> <laughs> Just another day on the job. <laughs> I bet he blends in pretty well with his hook hands and his fucking Rolls Royce he drives around in. This <laughs> is like not everyone's spot him coming. He uh, he's also into exotic animals, um, and he has owned a baby elephant, black panthers, cheetahs, ostriches, emus, African lions, rhinoceroses, tapirs, porcupine, and more. <laughs> As well as chimpanzees and tigers. He's gonna have like a whole badass zoo before long. Yeah, like, uh, like, I was talking to Priscilla about this guy, and she said when they, when she was a little girl, you could hear like tigers roaring on the other side of like his fence. That's awesome. Cause like, he's in this giant ass mansion in the middle of like a working class neighborhood. But there's just this giant mansion with, like, his name on the front gates. And a bunch of dangerous exotic animals. <laughs> yeah, and a bunch of dangerous exotic animals inside, I guess. Which is pretty nuts. I just imagine he's, like, buck naked, like, with a big-ass steak on it, one of his hooks. And just, like, <laughs> feeding the, the tigers. <laughs> it's like, one of his hands is a fishing pole. <laughs> it's, like, fishing for tigers in the middle of, like, India. Here's, a. Uh, Here's something from ExploreDallasHistory.com, 
about him. Uh, he says, uh, J.J. Arms has created quite a persona for himself, but we're going to break it down to fact or fiction. So uh, I'm going to read you guys a fact or a fiction, and you tell me what it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, born Julian Armas in 1932. Fact. It's a fact. Uh, he's had 13 attempts on his life. Fact. False. He's had way more. Yeah, it's false. <laughs> it's good. Uh, he's a, a helicopter pilot. Fact. Fact. That's actually fiction, but it, he has no license. So if he is piloting helicopters, he's doing it without a license. Well, I guess, you know, technically they're attachments, so it's not like an actual, <laughs> it's not an actual one. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he gets around it. You don't need a license for a part of your body. That's right. <laughs> uh, Except hookers. He's... Uh, Graduated from several prestigious universities. Fact. Everything's a fact. No, that's fiction. Uh, he's got um, 2,000 agents around the world working for him. Fact. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently there's record of zero agents working for him. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got over 2,000 around the world. So don't worry about it. Uh, he speaks seven languages, including 33 dialects of Chinese. Bag. <laughs> 33 dialects? 33 dialects of me? Chinese. <laughs> Just one fucking language. 33 dialects. Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe that shit. I believe it. That I do. sounds right. fucking Chinese accent dialect attachments. He's also gone on top secret <laughs> undercover <laughs> jobs in China and Cuba. Wait, the well, one obviously. in Cuba, he used the fucking hang glider to, like, deliver, like, ransom money. <laughs> well, fact. Yeah, that's fact. <laughs> well, the, the reason I think that one's fact is because, obviously, he knows all those Chinese languages. like 33 of them. Yeah. <clears throat> he just has an attachment that's a uh, a translator. <laughs> he goes, he speaks English into it and comes out or something else. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, bonjour. <laughs> no, no, Chinese. <laughs> Come on, <I'll> shake it. <laughs> Hello, oh. apparently, <laughs> uh, apparently, the movie Breakout, starring Charles Bronson, is said to be based on one of his cases. Fact. Yeah, false. That's actually a fact. It's supposedly based on one of his cases. Uh, he appeared in an episode of Hawaii Five O. Fact. <laughs> yes, that's they're, a fact. They're all facts. <laughs> so, uh, uh, one time he piloted a glider into Cuba and recovered two million dollars of his client's assets. Uh, of the famous Mexican prison break, another helicopter caper, which he said inspired the Charles Bronson movie Breakout, mm -hmm. uh, and the. Uh, Casey calls the Onion King caper, in which a beautiful model shot her octogenarian husband, then turned a shotgun on herself because arms wouldn't spend the night with her. No, I'm not going to say false on that one. Fact. <laughs> All incredible adventures of a super sleuth. It's just you, me, and your hookings. I feel like he was coming up with that story while sitting in his kitchen because the dude's name was the Onion King caper. And I'm just sitting there thinking, uh, uh onion, uh, king, caper. <laughs> yep. It's the onion king caper. It's my next story. I mean, it actually happened. That's, that actually happened to me, though. I'm telling you right now the story, but it's a real story. <laughs> it happened, though. But to me. Real. In Cuba. They made a movie about it. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you seen the Fast and Furious movies? <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. That's, that's your, that's uh, your the boy. Only, the only thing they got wrong was the NOS. That's your boy. The NOS is actually in my arm. <laughs> I, I attach it directly to... That's the, not where he keeps the NOS. <laughs> <laughs> I live my life like one quarter mile at a time. <laughs> <laughs> One quarter limit. Because that's how far you can get while driving with hook hands without <laughs> breaking down or crashing. <laughs> you can walk into my office with any type of case and I can handle it no matter what it is. We don't give up. This is JJ Arms, and he's maybe the world's most famous private investigator. I don't say that I am. People say that I am. 
Back in 1958, Arms founded The Investigators. The Investigators is a company that was established by J. Arms to conduct every type of investigation. We cover the whole spectrum. And like all legendary heroic figures, Jay has triumphed over tragedy. When I was uh, 11 years old, a friend came over to my home, had a box of dynamite caps. They exploded, had blown my hands off at the wrist. So young Jay was outfitted with prosthetics, and he managed to turn, turn a, a negative into a positive. Exactly. Here's JJ Arms petting his white Siberian tiger Simba. And here he is with his 53-year-old pet chimp, Gypsy. And here's Gypsy with Jay's son, Jay. So Jay, how many cases have you solved? Hundreds of cases all over the world. Can you be a little bit more specific? You ask an artist, how many paintings have you done? He can't tell you, I've done 20 paintings or 200 paintings. I take my craft like an artist. And he's had some pretty famous clientele. The most famous case was Marlon Brando. He says, Jay, somebody has kidnapped my son Christian. He gave me the information where the boy was kidnapped from. Legend has it that J.J. Arms tracked down Christian into the jungles of Mexico, flying his helicopter and staying up for five days without food or water until he came upon a camp with eight armed men. I heard him coughing in a little tent. I went into the little tent, and that was uh, Christian Brando. He didn't know me. He sees this guy with two hooks, so he thought I was one of the bad guys. I said, no, no, your father hired me. For J.J. Arms, what was once an impediment has become an asset and has led to a long, fruitful career. I've been doing this type of work for over 45 years. How old are you, Jay? Oh, I'm about 150. At 150? But I'm really not 150. At not 150, it's safe to say most of J.J. Arms' adventures are behind him. But he's not slowing down anytime soon. No, I have more work now than ever. Jay, do you see yourself as a legend? How do you want to be remembered? On my obituary, Jay Arms did it his way. One-liner. And that's it. So, uh, in this, like, one article, um, Arms claimed to be ten years younger than he actually is, also. Well, that's not too surprising. <laughs> Uh, the Federal Aviation Administration has no record of his airman certificate, but what he did have was action figures. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, like, the action figures you could, like, pull off his hands and put different mm -hmm. gadgets and stuff on there instead of, uh, instead of his actual hands. Even Stan Lee, like, approached him about making a comic book about him, uh, like, they never worked it out. Uh, is this what, uh... I hope so. Is it Evil Dead? Is that what that... Bruce Disney Campbell? Is yeah, is, is this Bruce Campbell based on this guy? Could be. Where he has a chainsaw for a hand yeah, fighting Ash. crime and evil. <laughs> That'd be really cool. He should have done the chainsaw hands. But instead he has like a revolver hand, a machine gun hand. I love the revolver hand idea. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Does it like cock with... Uh, a flex of his bicep? Probably. Hmm. <laughs> you flex it one way at Cox, you flex it another way at, like, fires. It's like tricep flex, bicep flex. <laughs> <laughs> and then the kickback breaks his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, so. how does that work? <laughs> Would it just, like, turn into a machine gun by accident because he's constantly flexing <laughs> while trying to re do, re refuse the recoil? Like, is that why he doesn't have a shotgun <laughs> arm? <laughs> he doesn't have a shotgun arm because it would just be like... <laughs> <laughs> That's why he doesn't have any of the exotic animals left. <laughs> when he tried to make the shotgun arm. I still shot him off. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Mr. Muggles, <laughs> No! <laughs> So, uh, uh, I also managed to find his website today while I was, like, snooping around on the internet, which what's, is pretty cool. What's the web address? So, the web address is www.jjarms.com. Nah, that's boring. <laughs> which is pretty boring, right? But, uh, on here, he has a frequently asked questions section. How many hands have you lost? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Which, uh, the how questions, many do you have? questions include things such as, how can I tell if my telephone lines are bugged? 
Uh, do you train people to become private investigators? <laughs> Is my information kept confidential? And how can I get a copy of Mr. Arms' autobiography, J.J. Arms' Investigator? So to, to tell if your, uh, your phone is bugged, just put some pesticide in it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a hint. It's bugged. <laughs> if it catches on fire, and you end up with a rash. <laughs> it's, uh... You gotta listen for that distinct sound that the bug emits. You put... You put an egg in a bowl of water, and you start singing the words to Africa by Toto over the egg, and like waving a stick back and forth. And after you're done blessing the rains, you pull out the egg and you crack it open, and if that egg is black, your phone lines are fucked. That's how it works. And if you did all that, you're probably also very stoned. <laughs> So go ahead and eat that egg. I bless the race <laughs> down in Africa. So, uh... Oh, who's that, uh, famous composer that does all, like, the movies and stuff, uh, like, Star Wars and... John Williams? Yeah. You know his son's the lead singer of Toto? That is... Dope. Awesome. Yeah, I did not know that. Did you know that, uh, Doug Jones is, uh, uh I don't know David who Bowie's is. son? Who's Doug Jones? Or, uh, is it Doug Jones? Duncan Jones. Duncan Jones, yeah. It's uh, yeah. David Bowie's son. I was like, Who's what? That? He's the guy who made the WoW movie. Oh, okay. And uh, Moon. He made the moon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh. so he also has another website here called spymall.com. <laughs> Spymall? Uh, which you can see, they've definitely managed to keep up with the times. I had to accept Flash in order to be able to use this website Impressive. here. Uh, it looks like it's straight out of GeoCities. It does. This is uh, pretty red on black, green on black. That's good Top for your eyes. Uh, some of the Sweet. specialized equipment that they sell on the website are law enforcement equipment, tactical gear, surveillance equipment, weaponry, firearms, secure communications, voice changers, personal protection devices, covert video systems, dial-up modems, wireless <laughs> video systems, <laughs> Explosives detection, night vision optics, phone line analyzers, custom armored automobiles. Oh, sweet. Typewriters. Uh, counter surveillance equipment, Pipes. holsters, specialty ammunition, uh, encrypted cell phones, spy glasses, locksmithing equipment, wagon wheels, stun guns, <laughs> pinhole video cameras. <laughs> Body worn video and portable X ray equipment. Sherlock Holmes hats. <laughs> <laughs> Those badges that say private investigator on them. Ha Switch! That one would be good. If they actually sold that shit, just like, <laughs> alright, uh, here's your badge and uh, your spike. Spy equipment. They also sell fake, fake hands. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that real? <laughs> Those are the real hands. What's a is a fake, fake hand? In yeah. and of itself, it's a real hand. You see it all the time in movies where one of the characters has one of their hands cut off, and they don't do like the CG. They just make their arms huge by putting an extension on their hand that makes it look like they don't have a hand, but their arm is also extremely long. Oh, like like when the, they get their hand cut off, but yeah. it's really just a really long shirt? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> but they're really just sitting there doing this exactly. inside of a really long shirt. Yeah. Just All I know is we definitely got to get hold of this guy if we ever get around to the point where we can start doing live shows, because uh, we we'll should rig up, like, then. we should rig up the van with a smoke screen system, an oil slick system. I do, I do request we have an armored vehicle. <laughs> 60,000 volt shock system, run flat tires, a self heating gas tank. I want to get a thing where, like, you hit a button and the license plate, like, comes up and it shoots out, like, uh, giant bladed discs. How Does about, he sell ejector How seats? about a four corner tear gas deterrent system? I, if he doesn't sell ejector seats. I'll be disappointed. <laughs> or uh, halogen gets, blinding lights. And he only puts them in uh, for you, but you have to convert the roof. So, <laughs> like... He says he can do custom anti-theft systems, so maybe we could do the saw blades thing you're yes. talking about. I don't want that so bad. I think the best anti-theft system in a car would just 
immediately have the car start blaring gay porn <laughs> when someone tries to break in. And then, like, another recording of someone going, are you watching gay porn? <laughs> There's no women in that porn. The girls never came. <laughs> this is gay porn. Everybody. Look at the gay porn this guy is watching. This is the gay porn mobile. Woo, woo, woo. Hey. <laughs> And then all the rednecks, like, pop out of the bushes with shotguns. <laughs> hey! You trying to break into my car? Well, wait, wait, I mean, uh, that's not my car. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gay. Oh. <laughs> Dude, you can watch my porn. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what do you, uh, <laughs> what do you think about, um, J.J. Arms, Ryan? Um, I was inspired originally by his life story, but now that I realize it's just a salacious <laughs> lie, that he's just using... Whoa, 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 whoa. It's all a lie that he's just <laughs> using to sell fucking merch. He really did rescue Marlon Brando's kid, though. No, That's verifiable. No. That's like no fucking a lie. verifiable thing. Plus, it was from hippies. <laughs> that doesn't even count as rescue. He probably found him he's passed like, out at, like, Senor Frogs in he's Mexico. Like, he probably just showed up and was like, hey, I brought some Twinkies. That, oh. Oh, far out. And then he just walks out of there with the kid. <laughs> yeah. He just has the Twinkies on his stick, and he drags them all the way back home, following the Twinkies on his stick. He had to pull out a gun, dude. He had to, like, almost shoot people. Yeah, but I feel like he would pull out a gun in any situation, just to say I had to pull out a gun. <laughs> he's, like, he's got a gun on What him. are they going to say? He's got two hook hands. Yeah. It's impressive enough that he managed to pull out that gun. You can't just sit there and come down on him for it. Especially in Texas, it's an open carry state. That is true. So what do you think of J.J. Arms Palmer? Well, on one hand... (laughs) If any of that is true, he's awesome. But on the other hand, it's not there. (laughs) So... (laughs) So it... it, I think it's all an illusion. Life is an illusion. (laughs) I think think his hands are real. He's just been hiding them in really long sleeve shirts. That's going to be like the final line of the reveal. He's had hot pants the whole time. He's, he's you had, have hands? <laughs> yeah, he, you he actually has, believe that shit about firing a gun with my bicep? <laughs> you thought that's a thing you could do? I want to believe. <laughs> I really do. I need like a shirt with like his picture on it, and it says "I want to believe." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah, it's just like I a, totally it's a bicep with a gun hand, and it's just like I want to believe. <laughs> yeah. All I'm saying is I've never seen him without a long sleeve shirt. <coughs> That's true. That's true. That's I've crazy. only seen him in suits. I've never seen him at all. Yeah, the that's also here. true. I've literally <laughs> never seen a picture of him before in my life. He looks like a badass uh, with a bad toupee. He looks like a dude who would lie a lot about himself. It's pretty clearly a toupee. He's like, nah, it's not a toupee. Nah, that's a toupee. This is my natural hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, like, made, it's, and <laughs> tries to run off. Yeah. Squee! How come when I look at pictures of you when you were younger, your hair was like light brown and now it's pure black? <laughs> no, no, it, it darkens with age. Uh, he just like changes his hands into garrote wire and like strangles him. <laughs> go go piano wire. <laughs> I imagine he would be like Jet Li from Lethal Weapon Four, but yeah. with no hands. That's how I picture this guy. And how do you kick our asses with no hands? I don't know. Let's well, his ask. feet don't have what's, hands. What's pretty cool? <laughs> apparently. Uh, Priscilla's brother got in a fight with one of his sons, uh, like, and Ooh. got his ass kicked. I bet, yeah. Because, like, uh, J.J. Abrams, J.J. Arms' son J. J. knew karate. <laughs> he, like, knew karate and, like, messed him up. <laughs> he didn't have hands, but he does have lens flares. <laughs> Lots of them. That's how he blinds his victims long enough to punch him in the face. Exactly. With this weird stuff. Perfect stump. analogy for his movies. <laughs> <laughs> Blinded, punched in the, the face. The aliens came to Earth. And the Avengers used their most secret weapon, the lens flare. <laughs> Blinded the aliens. Ah! So, uh... It's illegal in some states to uh, spotlight, but, you know... Lens flares aren't For good. the better of the <laughs> Earth, you know. I got a, uh, I got a email here this week, uh, another listener story from yeah. one of our listeners named Brittany. What up? What up, Brittany? How many T's are in that? It is two T's. And then an NIE. An IE? Mm hmm. Yeah, fake. <laughs> so, really uh. Real. False. It says, uh. When Not I, even one wire name? She says, so when I was eight years old, 
My mother was in a terrible accident. Uh, we were getting our roof retiled, and they were still working on it. They went home, the work wasn't done, and it began to rain. In the middle of the night, my dad felt water on his face and went to put bricks on the roof to cover the holes. My oh, mom quickly no. followed behind and offered to help to make it quicker. Uh, it was pouring rain. My dad was on the roof, and my mom was bringing bricks up to him. At one point, the ladder began to fall backwards, and she would have fallen onto a large pile of bricks. <laughs> Jesus. So my dad jumped off the roof and grabbed the ladder. In doing so, the ladder collapsed together, causing my mom's finger to get caught in it, and she slipped. She hung by her finger from the ladder with her feet dangling. Uh, she was screaming at the top of her lungs in pain, and rightfully so. My dad got her out, and the only way to get out of the ladder was to rip her hand out. Everyone in the neighborhood called 911 after hearing her screams and ran to the house to help. The ambulance came and took my mother to the hospital. With the ladder? Yeah, like, <laughs> trying to get the ladder off the whole time. She's like trying to shake it off like a mousetrap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just wagging people in the face with it, like trying to shake it off her finger. It's like a you have twenty. Oh, strength. It's like a Car twenty-eight foot ladder. <laughs> She's just whipping it all over the place. like car alarms going off, <laughs> like smacking kids riding their bikes with it. <laughs> you need any help? <laughs> ah, fuck you! <laughs> I was just trying to help. Uh, meanwhile, I was in bed. I couldn't sleep that night. I felt anxious and didn't know why. All of a sudden, I, know why. I saw a glowing apparition <laughs> walk in front of my door and look at me. I was terrified. I hid under my covers. After a minute, I came out to look, and the spirit was directly next to me. That's creepy. I couldn't move out of fear and just closed my eyes. I could feel hands go around my ears and cover them. When I opened my eyes again, I was in the hallway walking into my sister's room. After a moment, after a moment, it came out, looked at me, and disappeared. Almost instantly, I fell asleep. Yikes! Wow. Uh, so, <laughs> the next morning, I heard what had happened to my mom, and then about what I saw. The windows were open, and there was no way I wouldn't have heard my mother's blood curdling screams. The entire neighborhood did. I know that something came and protected my sister and I from hearing my mom that night, and then inevitably seeing what had happened. Uh -huh. I could never explain that night. That is pretty nuts. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. One time, my neighbor's house caught on fire, and uh, there was a uh, fire truck blaring its like sirens in my neighborhood. Mm. I didn't hear it at all. <laughs> and I mean, I was like twenty feet from their house. Wow. <laughs> Just like <laughs> I slept through the roof coming off my house in Florida before. Like literally, like it was a hurricane, and we boarded up all the windows and stuff. It was, like, so dark and, like, just the sound of, like, the rain hitting on the roof and stuff. I'm like, yeah. And, like, I'm asleep as hell in my room. And apparently the roof had, like, lifted off the house and then slammed back down. Like, boom! And, like, they came running into my room and they're like, Mike, Mike, did you hear that? I'm like, they're like, the roof came off the house. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> I like, went back to I'm sleep. sleep. <laughs> it's like, rolled over and went back to sleep. She also says, as a young teenager, I started feeling incredibly scared to be alone. I felt like I wasn't alone, ever. Something was watching me. I started having vivid nightmares about something evil constantly messing with me, hurting me, and invading my body. I was afraid of the dark, and the nightmares wouldn't stop. There were nights when a gray fog roamed around my room, and I could hear faint whispers. Uh... I'd hide constantly and never sleep without being completely under the covers. I felt like I was going crazy. Wow, that's also pretty trippy. Yeah. <laughs> They're putting chemicals in the water to turn the freaking fog gray. <laughs> <laughs> it took a lot of work. <laughs> you nailed it. I nailed it. That was a tongue twister. I was like, shit, I don't know if I'll get it. How do you know it's gay? I said gray. <laughs> so eventually more began to happen I'll never forget one night I was taking a bath I couldn't have been more than 13 I was taking a bath and I felt I was being watched I saw the fog slowly coming in and was terrified I was so vulnerable and couldn't hide 
I suddenly felt the water shift and something run up my inner thigh. Yikes. I screamed and ran out. My parents came after hearing me and saw I had long, dragged scratch marks running up my thigh. There was no way it was me, and my parents knew that. At the time, I bit my, my nails so much they had nothing on them. They could never make sense of what I had told them. Yeah. Shit. Heavy stuff. I thought it was fog. <sighs> Heavy fog. The sequel to Heavy Rain. Yeah. It's like they actually add the Benny Hill song whenever you mess up in the, <laughs> the quick time events. The last incident that I had with this entity was a night I was brushing my teeth before bed. I was alone in the bathroom looking in the mirror. All of a sudden, and for no reason, this large, terrifying, and evil grin grew on my face. I didn't know what was happening, and I couldn't control my body. I looked at myself and didn't recognize the person I was seeing. I felt a tear run down my face, and as soon as I gained control again, I ran out and cried the whole night. After that, I asked my parents, who were incredibly religious, to bring me to church and to have the pastor pray over me. They did, and after being blessed and prayed for, I never saw the evil thing or had uh, had it haunt me again. Wow. Um, kind of demon. Yeah, that sounds like some demon shit. Like, uh, fucking putting the violator smile on your face yeah. while you're, like, brushing your hair in the mirror. I don't think so. All I'm saying is this sounds like a plot to a pretty decent movie. Yeah, I would smash that mirror, I'll yeah. tell you that. Smash the mirror, burn the house to the ground, cut off your skin so that you never have to see your face again, and then bury your head somewhere where they'll never find it. Uh, all I'm saying is, Brittany, you should turn this into a script because <laughs> I feel like, you know, a couple tweaks, got, us, got yourself a movie. It's gold. I shit myself. <laughs> uh, the last big story I have is about my step-grandmother. My husband was insanely close to her. She was like a second mother to him. She developed liver cancer and was at the very end of her life in hospice at home. On Christmas night... We went to see her, as it would be our last one with her. After a few hours, her body began to shut down. It helped my mother and I helped my mother-in-law clean her and care for her as she was slipping away. She finally told us stop, and we knew it was time. Our head was in my hands, and with the family around her, she peacefully slipped away. Before she died, uh, she loved when I sang and asked if I would sing at her funeral. So before her funeral, I was rehearsing while my son and husband were out running errands. All of a sudden, I could hear a loud organ version of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. I went to the end of the hall to see where it was coming from. As soon as I got there, it was coming from the other end of the house. I went to check it out. Every time I checked, it would be on the other end of the house. I didn't know what to make of it. That's freaking creepy. <laughs> That'd be fucking crazy. The next day, I was speaking to my mother-in-law and asked her, uh, Does take me out to the ball game mean anything to you? She started crying. She said, Mom loved baseball. She even died with the game on. We were a huge family, and Mom loved to play the organ. She would play it before we watched the game, and we would all sing it together. Nope. How did you know that? Nope. I'm freaked out right now. <laughs> I knew she had come to let me know that she was okay. I think she wanted me to let the family know that she was at peace and to be okay with her moving on. I think it did. Thanks, Brittany. That was really good. Yeah. Well, that's fucking spooky. I'm glad that's what you took from that, because that's not what I took from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nope. Nope. That's yeah. something That's something making fun of you, because your grandma did. Yeah. That's fucked up. Like, my thing is, like, a lot of times with ghosts, it'll be like, an evil spirit disguising itself as someone you know to yeah. like gain your trust. Yeah. So like, I don't trust the ghost. <laughs> trust me, no, hell no. <laughs> I keep my head on a swivel that's, round ghost. That's right. <laughs> Almost died. <laughs> Specters, spirits, banshees. I don't trust none of them. I don't play with none of them. Fucking crazy. Cover me in <coughs> ghost gasoline and let their ghost ass on fire. <laughs> Miss me with that ghost ass <laughs> shit. So, uh. Sure, sure. 
<clears throat> so, Palmer. What? You, you got a shout out this week? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a. Uh, painter's tape. <laughs> painter's tape. Nice. Okay. Keeping the tape train going. That's it. That's it? You don't have anything to say about painter's tape? I mean, like why you would shout out to it? It's a, it's an adhesive <laughs> that uh, doesn't uh, peel paint, so you okay. use it to uh, paint really good straight lines. Okay, it's good shit. It's blue. That's dope. That's dope. I like it. <laughs> so <laughs> Ryan, you got a shout out this week? My shout out this week is to the TV show The One Hundred. <laughs> Pretty dope. It's on Netflix. Highly recommend it. What's it about? So it's about a, like a uh, number. Uh, it's a hundred people who get sent back to Earth from the space station where they survived uh, during after a nuclear apocalypse. Oh, it's pretty dope. I said it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's a little slow, a little slow to get started, but after like the first couple episodes, it gets it gets really going. <laughs> My shout out this week. Uh, I got two of them. Uh, I got one shout out to the show Dirty Money on Netflix because that was fucking dope. Uh, like basically, it's a show about like How to the ways that money. corporations have fucked people like oh. on purpose and in ways that probably killed people. Uh, like the the Volkswagen emissions test thing from like a couple years ago. Yeah. And, like um, they also have another one on the HSBC Bank. Uh, which we might be covering on the show, too. Um, and then my other shout-out, uh, I want to give to Priscilla, because otherwise I would never have known who this guy was. Yeah. Thanks, this Priscilla. is so fucking amazing. Yeah. So I'm glad to have had this joy brought into our lives. Brought into our <laughs> lives. And uh, uh, email us. Send us emails at weirdshitpodcast.gmail.com. Smash that like button. Smash that like button on iTunes or wherever it is that you subscribe to podcasts and leave us some good reviews because nothing helps us more than those reviews and those subscriptions on iTunes. Um, Send us your suggestions for any episodes you want us to cover. Follow us on Twitter. Tell a friend. Tell three friends. Keep it safe, so <laughs> whatever. <laughs> keep it secret, keep it safe. And uh that was for money. <laughs> ride or die. Quarter mile at a time. I like the fight club. I guess. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> so our numbers are growing. I'm still telling people. <laughs> Breaking the rules. And uh I guess we'll see you guys next week. How are they gonna see us? This is a podcast. Oh shit. <laughs> Don't tell them that. They'll think it's true. Hey, what up, guys? From Weird Podcast. I haven't heard any messages back from y'all. And I figured I would try maybe be the first. So I was going to call in and tell you one of my weird stories. So, we went to U of A campus in Alabama, and they have an old abandoned insane asylum. So, of course, we went and checked this out, because we like going on ghost adventures. So, it's me, my girlfriend, and two of our other friends. So, we're checking this building out. It's completely abandoned. There's no power cables going to it. They've done construction on it. It's partly burnt down. So we're going through, and we're on the second floor, and then we hear something, and it's an old-school telephone ring, like one of those rotary phones, like, so we all just stop. We don't know what the fuck's going on. There's nothing in this entire building, but we all heard the same thing. So we've gone back to this several times. And every time we go back, there's just something weird that happens. So we like to go check it out. We'd like to get more ghost equipment and stuff checked out. But now it's, they've converted it into dormitory. But I think we'll try and find something else. And when we do, is there anything else? I'll try and let you guys know. All right. Peace. Bye. And that episode
episode was dope. You know what else would be dope? If you guys told us your paranormal stories. I know some of you have seen ghosts. Some of you have seen fucking UFOs. Some of you have seen Bigfoot. If you write into us, we have an email. It is weirdshippodcast at gmail.com. We really want to read you guys' emails. Uh, if you want to just give us a shout out, you can give us a shout out. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you want to record a voice message, I want to start putting uh, voice shout outs at the beginning of every episode now. So if you send us those, that would be fucking dope. Uh, we have the uh, Google Voice number. If you'd rather call up and leave us a voicemail, uh, you can tell us your story that way. Give us, Send us some positivity, man. Keep the positivity coming. It's uh, The number for that is 919-346-3071. That's 919-346-3071. We also have a uh, Facebook group. The Weird Shit Podcast official Facebook group. Uh, we're on there all the time. We're posting memes. Uh, we want to talk to you guys. Fucking tweet at us. Fucking Facebook us. Fucking email us, man. Because we love to hear from you. And we want to keep doing this forever. Hello, my darlings. I'm Sammy the host of Encrypted. Every two weeks, I will bring you stories of mystery, true crime, and creepy. You can find me on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Do you have a story? I would love to hear it. You can go to the Encrypted Podcast discussion group on Facebook. On Twitter, you can find us at Encrypted Pod. Or you can go to accproductions.org slash encrypted. Don't forget to lock your doors and hold tight to your flashlight. Hey guys, I'm Nick. And I'm Joe. And we, we are, are the, the Fringe, Fringe Boys. The hosts of Cast Into the Fringe, a weekly dive into time travel, aliens, conspiracies, nerdy virgins, and many other strange things the government doesn't want you to know. Find us on Instagram and Facebook at Cast Into the Fringe. And check out our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud. Hi, this is Jim. And this is Annabelle. Together, we bring you the Forgotten News Podcast. We tell true stories from long ago. Stories from before you were born. Stories that made headlines for a week or a month, then vanished just as suddenly. We look for these long lost stories, then brush off the dust and share them with you. As fresh as the day they were first told. One thing we definitely promise you, the stories you will hear will always be a surprise, and it will be a true story. It might be a crime story. It might be a strange or spooky story. It might be a funny story. (laughs) If you are someone who might like to hear lost stories like these, then you should definitely listen to the Forgotten News Podcast. The Forgotten News Podcast is available on iTunes, also known as Apple Podcasts, as well as Google Play, Podbay, Player FM, and nearly every app for listening to podcasts. I don't know what else to say, except be sure to listen to the Forgotten News Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Steven. And this is Chris. And we're the hosts of the brand new podcast, Is This Adulting? Every week, we're going to sit down to have a discussion about life, culture, our own mental health struggles, and just about anything you can think of. Have you ever wondered which breakfast cereal is the best? Or how to help your friends who are dealing with mental illness? Or why waterbeds were a thing? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then have we got a show for you. And remember, kids, be happy, stay healthy, and go hug someone. Because you never know, they might just be starting a podcast. Oh. Hey there, I didn't see you. I'm Sarah, the host of the Salty Canadian Podcast. You want a podcast that is full of fun, rants, reviews, and just random stuff? Then this is a podcast for you. 
we can be found on any podcast catcher and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and have a great day. A. Hey everybody, Mike here. I just want to take a second to talk to you about our Patreon we have set up at uh, www.patreon.com slash weirdshitpodcast. Basically, Patreon is a way where fans and listeners like yourselves can choose an amount every month to donate towards the show. Uh, Your donations will be put towards uh, buying new equipment. It'll be put towards uh, buying munchies because fucking Palmer is insatiable. Uh, It'll be put towards uh, helping us pay our dues for hosting the show and for uh, keeping the websites going. And honestly, the main thing it'll help us do is uh, let me take more time to do more research on these topics. I have a full-time job. I work 60 hours a week, and then I spend 40 hours doing research for you guys because I love this show, and I want to give you the best thing I possibly can. Uh, so if you have uh, any anything you want to give us, if you think we deserve anything for that work, uh, feel free to go to Patreon and donate whatever you can. If not, man, it's cool. Like, I love every single one of you, and I'm so glad you're listening. Uh, Just share the show with whoever you think would be interested, and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks.